Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your daily Bible class or your commentary on the Bible. Now, let's open our time with a word of prayer and get right into the Word of God. So, Father, we thank you today for the Word of God, and thank you as well for the teachings that we're going to receive today from your word in Jesus name. Amen. Well, we're now finding ourselves in Luke chapter 7 and it starts off with a great story here. Now, it hit now Jesus had concluded all his sayings uh, in the hearing of the people and he entered Capernaum. Now, of course, this happened on uh, um hill not very far from the uh, little town of Capernaum and Jesus came down into the town and it says, a certain centurion service was dear to him, um, was sick and ready to die. So what does he do? He hears that Jesus is coming. And so he sent the elders of the Jew to him with him to come and heal his servant. So here Jesus is coming into town. And this man who had a lot of influence, especially among the Jewish people, because of his kindness. It says, when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying, this one is dead definitely worthy. I mean, this is a Roman, but he supports us. So when Jesus, he says he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. So this man was very generous. He actually had built a synagogue for them. So when Jesus went with them, he was not very far from the house. And the centurion sent his friends to him, saying to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, he says. I am not worthy that you should enter my roof. Therefore, I don't even think of myself worthy to you, but just say the word and your ser your my servant will be healed. So he sends some people there and uh, he says, listen, I'm not even worthy of you coming into my home. He said, but just sent the word and it healed. And Jesus, and then he said this, he says, for I'm a man placed under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And he says to my servant, do this, and he does it. Well, Jesus, when he heard these things, he marveled at him and said, wow, I say to you that there hasn't been such faith even in Israel. Jesus was amazed because this man understood the power of faith. He knew that it was simple obedience that brought about faith. You know, it was uh, Andrew Murray who said, in the school of obedience, you learn faith because when you tell God what you, or you when uh, God tells you what to do and you do it, you are showing real faith. And this man was showing real faith. Jesus says, listen, this guy's got great faith. I've never seen such faith, even in Israel. And those who were sent returned to the house and found the servant who had been sick well. Isn't that a great story? Well, it happened that a day after he was going to the, kid, the community called Nain and very large crowds were following him. And when he came to the gate of the city, a dead boy or a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And the large crowd was with him. When the Lord saw him, he had compassion on her and said, do not weep. Then he goes over, he touches the coffin, and he says, young man, arise. Isn't that amazing? And he who was dead sat up and began to speak, and he presented him to his mother. And great fear came among those who glorified God, saying, a great prophet has come among us. God has visited us this day. So when Jesus goes to a funeral, or was passing by a funeral, he looks at the mom, says, you know what? I have great compassion on you. I'm going to bring your son back. So he goes over. He talks to the uh, boy, says, arise. The boy sits up. Can <laughs> you imagine that happening? <laughs> well, folks, it does happen even today. And uh, they said, my goodness, a great prophet has come among us. God has visited us today. And that was the reality. Wherever Jesus went, God was with him, and God was using him, and God wants to do the same for us. Well, this report came throughout all of Judea, and the disciples uh, reported to him the things that were being said to him. And Jesus called to his two disciples and said, Are you, or um, calling to his disciples, said, 
are you the common one or do we look to another one? And, and Jesus was basically testing his disciples. When the men came to him, they said, are you John? The, they said, John the Baptist has sent us. Are you the one coming or should we look for another? And in that very hour, he had cured many people of their infirmities, infliction, uh, afflictions, evil spirits, and many of those who were blind, he gave them sight. So Jesus was doing great things, four things in particular. He was healing their infirmities. He was there healing their their afflictions. He was driving out the evil spirits and he was giving sight to the blind. Then Jesus answered, go tell John these things. You have seen and heard the blind see, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached him. He says, these are the four, six signs that I have done. So he says, go back to John and report this, that the lame walk, the blind see, lepers are cleansed, uh, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the gospel is being preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. So Jesus says, you're blessed when you're not offended because of me. And he says also as well, the messengers of John had departed. And then Jesus began to speak about John to the multitudes. He says, what did you go in the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you actually go see? A man clothed in soft garments, indeed those who are gorgeously apparel. Well, they live in luxury in king's courts. He says, when you went to see uh, John, you didn't see one of those, you know, fat cats that you see in rich apparel. Well, you find those in king's courts or in big houses. What should you go out to see? You went out to see a prophet. Yes, you say to you, more than that, he says, listen to what he says. This is what is written to him. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who prepare your way before you. So he's quoting Malachi 3, uh, 1, about John being a messenger sent uh, ahead of Jesus. He says, and he says, for I say to you, among those born of women, there's no one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is in the least in the kingdom is greater than he. So Jesus was teaching that uh, John the Baptist, even though he was the greatest among all women up to Jesus himself, he says, even those who are least in the kingdom are greater than he. Because God is looking at obedience. God is looking at humility. God is looking at people who have the right attitude, the right vision, the right perspective when it comes to the things of God. And he says this, and when the people heard him, even the tax collector justified God, having him baptized with the baptism of, of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God for themselves, for they did not get baptized by him. John was preaching repentance. And many tax collectors and sinners came, different people came to be baptized by him. They were truly sorry for their sins. But the religious folks, the Pharisees, the scribes, the Sadducees, the leaders of the synagogues, they didn't because they didn't see the need. And Jesus was simply pointing out that God rejoices over one sinner who repents than 99 who do not need to repent. And the unfortunate thing is when you get a caught up in religious life, when you get caught up in your own piety or your own self-righteousness, you don't see that you need to repent. But the tax collectors and the sinners, they knew they needed to repent. They knew they were sinners and they gave their lives to Jesus. To, they got baptized by Don, John. And the Pharisees and the religious folks didn't because they didn't see the need. There's a great lesson for us to learn today. Well, we'll continue on tomorrow in Luke chapter 7. My name is Robert Dean Steele. This is your commentary on the Bible or your daily Bible class. God bless.